Hi everyone, uh, my name is Chow and I'll be presenting on a food security strategy for the city of Burnaby. Uh, before I begin, I'd just like to acknowledge that we are on the unceded territories of the Esquimalt, Songhees, and the Wasanish people. So my practicum was with Burnaby Food First, which is a food security coalition in Burnaby. Just due to the structure of BFF, my practicum supervisors ended up being from the city of Burnaby and Burnaby Neighborhood House, both of which sit on their board. So the ultimate goal of my uh, practicum was to develop, um, I guess, recommendations for a food security strategy for the city of Burnaby. So a little bit of background. Food security is when all people at all times have physical and economic access to sufficient, safe, and nutritious food to meet their needs and preferences. And it can be classified into household and community food security. Actions addressing food security um, fall upon the spectrum with stage one being short-term relief, so things like emergency food banks, food pantries, soup kitchens, um, stage two being capacity building, so community gardens, um, skill building workshops, etc. And then stage three being really addressing those broader systemic issues, so changing policy, infrastructure, and overall food systems. So what is a food security strategy and why do we need one at the municipal level? A f um, and it, it's basically an official plan to address food security issues and it brings together actions from all three stages of that continuum into one cohesive vision. It allows for integration with other key areas such as transportation, housing, and poverty reduction. So why is this important and why do we need it? Um, food security is a big issue in Burnaby. Uh, one of the main indicators of food insecurity is um, income, which makes sense. And Burnaby has a pretty high level of poverty. Um, there's 20% of the population is low income. Their senior poverty rate is double that of BC's. And their child poverty rate is 22%. Um, their food bank usage has been increasing steadily throughout the years, as can also be reflected in um, BC in general. And this has huge implications on public health. It affects physical and mental health, childhood development, exacerbates chronic illnesses, and has huge costs on our um, healthcare system. So one of the biggest challenges in advocating for a food security strategy is convincing the city that this is their role. A lot of cities feel like because they have less jurisdiction over food systems that it's not really um, their role and it's not really within their control to um, impact change, but that's simply not true. Um, because of where local governments are located, they are closer to the communities that they're working with, they're on the front lines, and it really allows them to be quicker in addressing solutions, to be more adaptable, and um, to be able to integrate the things that they're working on better. And they're already responsible for so many service areas that already involve food, so things like the environment, the economy, land use, um, even transporta transportation and housing. So they actually do have a big role to play. So context in Burnaby, we've already established the problem and the issue. Um, so now we want to look at kind of what Burnaby has to offer. Um, like Charlotte was talking about yesterday, it's really important to take a strengths-based approach instead of looking only at the detriments and at the weaknesses in the community. So we really wanted to start from that angle. So we started with an asset mapping project. Yeah, so asset mapping is where you identify all the resources within a community. And um, I created a directory of all um, food resources which were related to food production, food procurement, capacity building, as well as relate resources related to homelessness since this is a population that was most likely to require short-term relief, so stage one resources like food banks. Um, currently, ours is just in a list form, but we're planning on creating an accessible online interactive map so that it'll be, <laughs> sorry, easier for people to search up things. Um, so the second project that I did was a community consultation. Um, it was open to the public and hosted by BFF. I honestly expected five people to attend, so when 30 plus people attended, I was pretty happy. Um, it included people from the com community, nonprofit groups, faith groups, um, Fraser Health, the school board, and um, even uh, 
city councillors and members of parliament. So it was a pretty diverse group. And we basically um, came together, had roundtable discussions on what individuals and groups were already doing to address food security and what they felt like were challenges or pressing needs. This was as much a celebration of what was already being done um, as well as an opportunity to identify um, areas of improvement, ways to have increased collaboration, and ideas for solutions. And finally, I did a very quick review of what the city was already doing. So actions related to food, um, like uh, protecting ALR, which is Agricultural Land Reserve, um, fish habitats and sustainable seafood, um, what they're doing in terms of local food production, their strategic directions, um, and uh, the relation to the regional food strategy that was uh, set by the Metro Vancouver. Um, yeah. And this is what we found, um, that Burnaby has a lot of good work being done in the area, but there's still many gaps in the food system that need to be addressed. So here are some of the challenges that um, are faced by people who are trying to work on food security. Um, number one is that uh, most of the services provided are by grassroots or community organizations, and they really struggle with limited capacity and infrastructure. So for example, Burnaby Food First, um, in the last few years, they've had declining membership, they don't have consistent funding, so it's really hard for them to do any sort of long-term continuous action addressing food security. Um, there's also a lack of coordinated effort amongst local agencies. When I started this project and I was talking to people, I found out that there were already other groups who wanted to do asset mapping. So the community action team on the opioid crisis is creating an asset map, which has food on it, and the Burnaby Public Library is also creating an online resource. So instead of all of these groups doing things separately, they could just work together and create one large resource that everyone can use. Um, and we also found out that the majority of the work being done is stage one and two. Again, without municipal buy-in, it's really hard to do those stage three um, things that address larger systemic issues. issues. So the recommendations that I've put forward for the creation of a food security strategy um, are these three. One is the development of a food security council or a food policy council. Um, we want to create a council that's led by the city um, that would include members um, and key stakeholders such as community members with lived experiences, um, the health authorities, the school board, Burnaby uh, Board of Trade. Um, yeah, to really have, to really set goals and um, have a vision of what a food security strategy would look like and how we would address food security. Um, number two is community engagement. Like a lot of you have already talked about, it's really important to engage and include the people that you're working with. Um, when you're making policies, we want to work with the community and not on them. And finally, we want to have integration with existing policies and frameworks. So we want to make sure that it's tied and connected to the other existing frameworks and that we're really addressing things like poverty within our strategy because that's really the biggest issue related to food insecurity. And that concludes my presentation. Thank you. I would like to thank uh, Rebecca Mahaffrey and Kimberly Barwick, my supervisors, as well as Nigel, Kathy, Betty, and Charlotte for all the work that you guys have helped and all of you. Thank you. Okay, any questions? Awesome job. Um, I have a question. Uh, the first thing I want to acknowledge is the fact that asset mapping, like I think that's like a great thing that you took on. And I really like that you not only incorporated just like the food aspect, but other things that are playing into like food insecurity and things like that. Um, when it comes to the stage two development, it sounds like a lot of it has to do with like food literacy. So I think of food literacy as like learning about food from the kind of head, heart, and hands, so kind of like integrating all of those aspects together. So I was wondering what type of, I guess, like resources are within the community that kind of address food literacy as a means to help with food insecurity, if there's any. Okay, so um, most of the like stage two work being done in Burnaby is like, um, <clears throat> uh, like community kitchens and gardening workshops. 
so really about um, kind of ways that you can grow your own food, ways that you can cook healthy meals for yourself. And it's also about um, community inclusion and bringing people together, which I thought was really cool that you're trying to address kind of two different things. Yeah. Um, thank you for your presentation. It was really interesting. Um, I also found a lack of coordinated efforts during my project, so that was cool to hear. Um, but I was just wondering with your asset mapping, if you identify any like Meals on Wheels services um, to help with food security for seniors or people with disabilities, and if it's included in the food security strategy recommendations at all. Uh, yeah, so on my food uh, list directory, we had um, meal delivery services for, yeah, for seniors or people who had accessibility issues. Um, the problem is that some of them don't have physical locations necessarily. Like, it wouldn't apply on the map, right. per se, so, okay, cool. yeah. Thank you. Hey, Chow. Um, <laughs> so, I, was, I used to work with people um, who constantly access different, um, like, food resources. Um, mm -hmm. But given their, um, like, substance abuse issues, they'd often lose their identification. And this was a major mm -hmm. barrier for them to access, um, you know, their basic need of food. Yeah. Um, does this, did this come up at all about uh, addressing that kind of issue? Um, not really, because okay. the majority of resources in Burnaby are informal. So they're, like, church groups, um, things like that. It's the only resources that require ID are usually the Food Bank and Salvation Army. So that wasn't as much of an issue, yeah. Awesome, I think we're gonna to have to leave it there. Thank you.